Hello! Welcome to Developing Graphics Frameworks with Python and OpenGL Part 13, Keyboard Input with Pygame. In this video, we're going to add the ability for the user to interact with our applications using the keyboard. The first step is going to be to add some supporting data and functions to our input class, and we'll test it in this video with a text-based application. After we establish that the keyboard input works as we expected, in the next video, we'll add this functionality into a graphics-based application where the user can move a triangle around the screen using the arrow keys. All right, so keyboard input with Pygame is actually pretty straightforward. The Pygame library provides support for working with user input events already. And so first, let's return to our code base and let's open up the input class. There's not a whole lot in here, but there's about to be a lot more code. Um, right now, in our update function, there's a for loop which can be used to cycle through all the user input events which have occurred since the last time we checked the update. Um, Pygame also detects key down events which occur the moment a key is first pressed, and key up events, which occur the moment a key is released. And so in this class, we'll create a few lists to store the names of those keys so that the user can check them later, like in the update function of the main application. Now, the keys that are designated as up or down that we're going to store in lists, they should only remain up or down for a single frame or for a single iteration of the main application loop. And so we're going to set these lists up, but we have to clear them before checking the Pygame event list for new events during the next iteration. Uh, the other important terms we need to introduce, uh, an event or action is said to be discrete if it happens once at an isolated point in time, or continuous if it, well, continues to happen during an interval of time. And key down and key up, those are discrete events. But, you know, many applications feature continuous events, such as moving an object on screen. That should be happening for as long as we are holding down a key. Uh, here in this video, we're going to use the term pressed to refer to the state of the key between the key down and key up events. We'll call that key pressed. Though we should note that there's absolutely no standard terminology for these three states. Other programming languages might call key down and key up. They might call it key pressed and key released. Anyway, we will keep track of key pressed key names in a third list. All right, so in the input class, let's go ahead and set these up. So first, in the init function, we're going to go ahead and add these three lists. All right, so we'll say these are lists to store key states. Um, and first, just we'll define these for later reference, uh, down and up are going to be discrete events and they're going to last for one iteration of the game loop. Meanwhile, the term pressed, uh, that's going to con refer to a continuous event, uh, and it lasts for the entire duration between the down and up events. All right, so to start, these are class variables, so we'll start with self dot. Uh, self dot key down list, self dot key pressed list, and self dot key up list. All right, those are going to be our three lists. And then uh, next in the update function, and right, so scrolling down a little bit, uh, like we mentioned before, key down and key up. Uh, those key names, we, we need to clear those every time, right? So uh, we'll reset, and this is in the update function, we'll reset discrete key states. So we'll say self.key 
key down list. I'll reset that to the empty list. Same thing with self dot key up list. We'll set that to be an empty list. Now within the for loop, uh, we already listen for one type of event, a quit event, but we're going to add some other event names. And so let's also add in a comment. Let's say uh, we're going to check for key down and key up events. Then we're going to get the name of the key from the event and append it to or remove from the corresponding lists. Alright, so for example, if our event type is pygame.keyDown, well first let's figure out the actual name of the key. Now, this actually returns a, a pygame constant, but for readability we'd like to convert it to a string. So let's set key name equal to pygame.key.name, uh, then whatever key was stored by that event. All right. Next, uh, we'll say self dot key down list. We'll go ahead and append the name of that key, and also self dot key pressed list. Uh, we'll append the key name there as well. All right. So when you press a key down, figure out the name of that key, and then add it to those to those two lists. Um, completely analogously, we need to handle the key up. So if event dot type equals pygame dot key up. Once again, we'll figure out the key name. Key name equals pygame dot key dot name event dot key. In this case, since we've kind of released the key, we need to remove it from the pressed list. So self dot key pressed list dot remove the name of that key. Also self dot key up list will add it to that list or append it to that list. And again, those lists, the key down list and the key up list, uh, those are cleared. So this will only be true for one iteration of the game loop. And then just for readability's sake, to kind of more easily query the contents of each one of these lists, we're going to add a couple of functions. Um, and these functions need to be defined at the same level as updates. So always be careful for that indentation. And so at this level, I'm going to define the function, let's add a comment, um, functions to query the key states. All right, so first we'll define is key down. All right, this is a class function, so it's going to be self, comma, uh, key name. All right, and we're going to check if it's in the corresponding list and then return either true or false depending if it is. Uh, so return uh, key name in self dot key down list. Oh, sorry, not is in, right? Because we're checking if something is in a list. Right, and similarly, uh, I'm just going to copy and paste this because the other functions look pretty much identical. We have an is key pressed. We're checking if the name of the key is in the key pressed list. And is key up. We're checking if the key name is in the key up list. All right. So those are the functions that we need. Now, before we actually put this into a graphics-based application, I want to go ahead and just add this to a, a simpler application, so maybe just a text-based application. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and create a new example, a new test class, 
I need to put this in my uh, not the core folder. Remember, all test classes go in the folder above that. Right? And since this is video 13, I'm going to give this the very clever name of test-13.py. Right, and let's see, the, the code's going to be pretty familiar, I hope. From core.base, we're going to import the base class. Right, and the goal of this one is just to check input. So test the input functions. All right, so class test extends the base class. I always need an initialize function, initialize. Uh, so we're going to print initializing program. Now I need an update function, so define update. Uh, and so for this first iteration, I just want to go ahead and print the contents of each of these key lists. All right, so let's just do some debug printing. And I'll check uh, if the length Let's see, in the base class, uh, we defined an input object called input. Uh, so we're going to check if the input key down, got to spell that right, key down list, right, if the length of that is greater than zero, then I want to print uh, first, and I'll say the word keys down, colon, uh, comma, I can't add these things together because they're not both strings. So I want to print that followed by self.input.keyDownList. Right, and I'd like to basically copy and paste and do this two more times. Except, of course, for key pressed. All right, so I'm going to check to see if there's anything in the key pressed list. If so, I'm going to print that. And finally, the key up list. Keys up. And key up list. And then at the very end, uh, we always have to create an instance of the class. So instantiate and run. So create a new test object and then run its run function. All right. I'm going to go ahead and maybe run this. So it's saved. Let's go to Tools and Build. Oh, what's going on here? Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, it auto-completed to the wrong capitalization. Lowercase letter for the name of the file, uppercase letter for the name of the class. That's my convention, and I didn't check that. All right, save that, and let's try building again. Uh, tools Build. All right, so I've got my graphics window, which I really don't care about too much. What I'm more interested here is what's going to get printed in the console. Oh, and I was actually just <laughs> shrinking this a little bit, and you can actually see that it's working. Uh, let me run that one more time. I want to make the code small and build this. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and tap the A key real quick. That, that, was, that was a two-frame tap right there. So when I pressed it, the keys down, you'll notice it prints A, keys pressed, right? That was true for multiple frames, and then keys up. And if I hold a key for a little bit longer, right, this prints and then I let go. You can actually tell when I let go because you'll see, well, it says keys up right here. And you can also figure out the names of the keys from this application, like the numbers are just numbers. You can figure out Oh, my computer left shift and right shift are different. Uh, control. Space is not a space character, but literally the name space. I have up, left, down, and right. Right, so that's pretty cool. Um, right, so that shows us what keys we're pressing. Also, conveniently, you can press more than one key at once. So I could do something like I could press A, then also hold B, and then also hold C let go of B, or sorry, let go of C, let go of A, let go of B. And I can press all sorts of keys. Right, there might be a limit to how many keys you can press at once. 
right? So right, if I try to push all the arrow keys, that doesn't always work. There are hardware limitations to how many keys you can press at the same time. And so cool. That tells us that the names of the keys are actually being added into this. So that's really great. Um, the way we'll typically use this, right? This is just some kind of debug printing. So I'm going to go ahead and comment this out. Typically, when we're using this new functionality, we're going to use those functions that we wrote. Right, so for instance, I might do something like, uh, let's say this is typical usage right here. Let's make this a small bit bigger. Right, we're typically only used to listening to a couple of different keys. Right, so I might say something like uh, if self.input.is key down, and then as a string, you'd enter the name of the key you're looking for. Uh, so maybe I'm looking to see if the space bar was just pressed down. In that case, uh, I'll print. Uh, maybe I'll print hello. Or uh, if I'm interested in something being continually pressed, itself.input.is key pressed. Remember, this is a continuous action. Uh, maybe I'm looking for moving to the right. And so I'm checking to see if the right arrow key is pressed. In that case, I would print um, moving right. All right, so yeah, that's how you typically use it. Let's go ahead and give this a run uh, just to see it in action. Pressing build. All right, and again, we want to focus on the window down here. And so if I press you know, if I just press the different letter keys, oh, I pressed something which was apparently not a real key. That was very strange. All right, uh, let me try that one more time. Pro tip, do not mash the keys. But if I press maybe the space bar key, it'll print hello. If I hold it down, it still only prints it one time every time I press it. Meanwhile, if I hold the right arrow key, it will continue to print that message. If I tap spacebar in there, you might see the little space message go in there. And pressing other keys, nothing's really happening. So that's, again, how we're going to typically use uh, these new functions in the input class. In the next video, we're going to go ahead and move around uh, some kind of object on the screen using this new functionality. All right. Thanks for watching.